All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today is big block Mopar cylinder head day. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you're looking at some of the most famous aftermarket Mopar big block cylinder heads in existence right now. The Trick Flow 270. I've got a set of these and I've got a set of Trick Flow 240s to do a little bit of comparison with. I also have a set of Edelbrock E Streets that you might want to look at as well. I got them here. We might as well compare. Right now, I got these bolted onto a low deck. Uh, this is a 400 block that's going to be turned into a 500, or excuse me, 512 stroker soon. Uh, that'll be on the channel as a build. But before we do that, I wanted to check the intake fitment on this. So we'll kind of know. These are 270s. We do have the 240s. Uh, I'll just go with whatever the owner wants. Obviously, there's different reasons for buying different heads. Um, you'll notice I already like how they've got this cut out for distributor. So you don't have to grind it out yourself. That's cool. But I want to show you how the track heat intake fits on these heads just as it is right now. Let me get it taped up. So here's step number one. I just got some nice masking tape laid out over the ports and covering the entire edge of the head. That'll be a quick transfer for us in just a second. And here is our... Trick flow track heat intake. I can set it down one hand. I'm gonna get our bolt holes lined up. And I realize there's no gasket on here. I'm just doing this as a size comparison and kind of a uh, quick way, quick reference. I would look down the port, but they are massively um, undersized on this intake. And trick flow does say you can trim this intake to fit those ports. And I'd like to test that right now and just be sure, because it looked like a long way to me. So let me bump this up and get it traced out. Now, before I pull this intake off, I want to show you I've traced it with a super fine line. And I want to set my camera down and show you the height to the intake from this front rail right here. So that if you're figuring this in your car, do you need a hood scoop or not? Um, you'll have this measurement. Somebody needs it out there. I also have a couple other intakes I can drop on real quickly and do the same thing just for your reference. Find me the straightest spot I can here to where they intersect. Six and three sixteenths. Here's a good old performer RPM like we just had on the dyno. And you can tell it's got quite a bit more slope to it than the track heat did. Five and an eighth. Move out a little bit. Five and an eighth, five, five and a sixteenth. A little over six and an eighth. There you are. Don't forget that now old. Here's one. an old dirty torker, 383, just like I had on that dyno build. You can buy them for $75 all day long on Facebook. Uh Four and five sixteenths. I'll check the back if you're curious. Uh, five and five sixteenths. That is just one ugly dude on there, but she is short. You got to give it that. And it makes torque. We know that part. So this is about to be fun. Ta-da. That is quite a bit difference and yeah it looks like most of it I were laid out on my intake excuse me just to see kind of which way I would have to grind on that intake to make it happy to go with these heads let's try that and before I remove that I've got to do a little trim out just like that just like that so we'll know there's our reference top of the intake when that's perfectly lined up this should put our ports very close. Transfer is complete. I went ahead and marked around the edge of the port with my red marker here. When I peel this off, we'll be able to tell a major difference. So the outside of that line is to where the port would need to be opened up to to match the ports in the head. And there's other ways of doing this. I'm just doing it for reference right now. I'm not about to port this intake. Um, 
I marked this one to the outside edge of the actual gasket itself. So you can see trick flow uh, left quite a bit, I think, um, on, ma on matching up to that gasket. And it is nice to have some if you're trying to match it to your specific deal to have some meat left instead of them just hogging it out to the very bitter end. So we can peel this one off and look. When she goes, she's going to be uh, probably ruined, but that's fine. There we go. So that's got to go to the outer edge of this all the way to there if this was a poured out scenario and I'd like to just check I'm certain it could be gasket matched but that distance right here the thickness from there to there of that roof of this uh, intake let's check that measure quick. that pin and we will subtract in just a second so 815 on that pin find an edge that's not raised, stick my pin here, then I'll get a measurement on the entire thing, such as this. And that'll get us in the ballpark. That's a double checker. 104.3. One inch, 43 thousandths. Now we do our math. 1043 minus 818. 225 thousandths. Which is a little less than a quarter inch. Something worth adding, I think. We have a couple of competing different angles here, so uh, I'm test fitting all this without a head gasket on. I'm test fitting it without intake gaskets on. Uh, this intake face is not the same angle as this head face here. So when that head uh, actually goes on, it gives a different angle to this intake that way. I, that's the simplest way I can tell you that. So if we put a 50 thousandths thick head gasket here, which doesn't have anything to do with us setting an intake up, um, it's going to move the heads a little bit wider, causing the intake to drop just barely a little bit more. So it, it's, you know, part of the stack that we, uh, a lot of people talk about, but what it's going to end up being is whatever it is. And then the intake's going to get adjusted. You know, these heads won't, won't be milled on that, that face or anything like that. Since it is big block head mock-up day, these are some 240s. And we may end up going with the 240s if we like the intake uh, fitment better. And we go ahead and decide that it is highly unlikely that we're going to, uh, by we, I mean me, uh, am I going to spend as much time porting that intake out to fit these or not? Um, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, head choice here in just a minute. But I went ahead and tried to put a straight line right here so I can bolt that intake back on for you and... It'll be bolted onto this side, not that side. And you'll get to see the difference in how much taller of a head profile the 270 is versus the 240. Now, this will get you a little bit better view. I never have removed this tape from this head, so I kind of wanted to use it for an example. Uh, we know right now roughly the thickness of this runner is 225 thousandths or 224, whatever it was. Um, so less than a quarter inch, obviously. Uh, and we can pour it into that and we can get closer to this. And I do realize, and I probably haven't mentioned it yet, whenever you put gaskets on here, like 270s would take a plate to go under the intake. When we put a gasket on here, it's going to raise this intake just a little bit higher even. So that would cheat us a little bit on top, right? And I can, I can do that just uh, by loosening my bolts and pulling it up some. But... The air at the roof is kind of what matters the most. So having that port alignment uh, drastically is more important than the other sections. Maybe the outer walls as it comes down. But uh, here's the difference I wanted you to see 
and the 240 head versus 270 on the intake. So if you can see the distance from that spot, imagine a straight line going here. That's how much that intake would drop with the 240s. That is one of the major considerations in choosing your cylinder heads. On every build that I've done, people always comment and say, why didn't you buy 270s or max wedge ports of some kind for that engine? Part of it's price. Um, they do cost more than other heads. The correct intake that I can find for a low deck right now is from Indy, and I believe they want seven or $800 for it. I'll put a picture up here. It's going to have a taller profile. If you're trying to fit this under a car hood of any kind, like not a race car, then you're going to have problems. I did a Dyno 440 uh, for my buddy Nick. He's got a flat hood on his charger. That's why he went with 240s, and people were freaked out about Engine Master shows you make more power with the 270s. I don't think anybody in the world's going to try to fight you about that. Um, but what will fight you is your hood when you try to shut it and the carburetor leaves a dent in the top. So I just want to keep that in mind. A lot of people don't think about it. There's a struggle, and I understand. So it's a lot easier just to run a hood scoop, forget about it all, and run the tallest intake in the world, and everybody's happy. I had somebody else fight me on the other, on the 500 about, we used the torquer intake. That's one day he sent me that. Um, but it's it's shorter than the, than the Performer RPM. Like I showed you that in this video with those other heads. And I mean, if, if you're looking for clearance, you gotta have it. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you wanted to run the torquer in a spacer, you might have a better chance of doing that. I'll show you the Edelbrock first. So this chamber, also if you buy a 440 source, it'll have this exact same chamber uh, because it's very much the same as this. I believe the Edelbrock had it first. Anyway, uh, those are nice heads. I've got a set on my blue truck right now. The E Street head from Edelbrock. There's a chamber size, shape, whatever you want to call it. These are 84 cc. Let's look down the runners real quick. They got kind of a quick and dirty uh, cutout job on them. You know, just they cut out and if someone had uh, hand blended them into here, all good. The trick flows do have provisions for lash caps. I don't know if you can see that right now, but both sets do. Um, I want you to look at the CNC work. I know we show that. I've shown that before in other videos, but that's all beautifully wonderful. And I'm assuming Everyone out there agrees the Trick Flow 240 would outflow an Edelbrock head. Uh, beyond that, we go to the big dog, the 270, and it's super nice in there. I think that finish looks really good. It doesn't have that uh, the deep cut stuff kind of like that 240 might have a little bit more. There, you can kind of see it in there. Anyway, here's another deal it boils down to. So $1,399, so call it $1,400, uh, $1,619, $1,620. So what is that, $220 more than that head? And $1,563. This is for a pair. You can buy a pair of Edelbrocks for $1,563, $95. And that's before, uh, if you can get a discount or something at Summit or anything like that. So think about that. A pair of heads, $1,563, $95. Uh, this pair's $3,240 before tax, so call it $3,500 for this pair of heads. Uh, this pair here, what are we looking at? Uh, $400, $2,800, call it $3,200, $3,100 for the pair. So $3,100, uh, $1,563, call that $1,700 for a pair. So is it worth it? to pay twice as much, y'all can decide on that. I'm just laying facts out here for you. And this is an E Street head, so it does come with flat tappet springs. It's a little bit cheaper model. I think they have powdered metal seats. I've got E Street heads with a, you can get this in a 75 cc chamber. Uh, I've got that in my race car right now with a solid roller cam on it and 550 pounds of spring pressure, and they've been doing great. So uh, it is what it is. But yeah, rough casting on the chambers versus the CNC chambered. But I'm pretty sure these chambers are identical on the 240 and 270. They look uh, very similar to it to me, but 
Just got word from our owner. He's gonna let me port that intake and do a nice gasket match to the 270 head. So we're gonna have a dyno 512 with 270 heads and the track heat intake. If you want my opinion on heads, if you're still watching at this point, you might. Um, and I don't know everything. I'm learning every day. If you're on a tight budget, go with cast iron heads and just get them redone. Get a simple valve job. Go and drive your car and enjoy it. Don't You don't have to stack parts up for a long time and all that stuff. Uh, driving your car and enjoying it is more important than getting every nice piece in the world. Somebody will agree with me out there on that. Um, if you've got a little room in your budget, getting aluminum heads is a nice idea. And don't forget about like 440 Source does have some if you want the stock look. Um, totally nice heads. But... If you want to keep stepping up from there, uh, I think the Edelbrocks flow a little more. Um, I've had good luck with them. If you want to get more compression, the E Streets with the 75cc chamber does give you a little bit uh, better bump in compression uh, than a lot of other variety out there. If your budget allows to go step up to a 240, do the 240. I mean, you know, if you're doing a stock stroke deal, the 240 may be the best bet for you, especially if you're just street driving or bracket racing or something like I do. Um, if you really want to go all out, go 270, which that's not even quote all out, but it's another tier up, right? I, we've never looked at all out uh, wedge heads on this channel because I haven't had any on here, but Indy makes a nice head. Um, these Victor Juniors on the stroker in the floor, it's their nice heads can be made to flow really well. Like Hughes engines have some stuff for them. Uh, and these are gonna get done up soon. So lots more engine stuff coming. Uh, do what your budget allows, but hopefully that helps somebody out there. I appreciate y'all watching. And I'll see you. people.